everyone, Ham here. Today I'm back with another RTX 4090 benchmarking video. This time we're looking at Microsoft Flight Simulator and we're going to be checking it out on the Reverb G2 at maximum native resolution again at 90Hz. So in this video I'm going to do some A and B comparisons with the 3090 and 4090 at three different locations. Now in terms of settings, I'm using the best VR settings as per Pie in the Sky Tours uh, video, so I'll, I'll leave a link to his channel. I basically put those in using the NVIDIA DLSS preset that he suggested. Now in terms of stats, I'm going to be using the OpenXR uh, statistics panel. Now one thing I did notice is for the first run on the 3090, although I thought I'd turned reprojection off, it does appear to be on. However, it still does display the GPU frame time and the CPU frame time at the top. So those are the two things you'll need to look at at the top next to the refresh rate and not the uh, final delivered refresh rate, which will be close to 90 on the first run. The only thing to mention is because I'm using the Windows Mixed Reality Portal, the VR view is a little bit pixelated and that's just a side effect of the uh, mirror view. It's not like that in the headset, in the headset it's really sharp. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at the playback of the video. It is sharper than that, I just need to figure out a better way of capturing the video footage. Anyway, I'll let the video play. There is some commentary by myself throughout the video and I'll be toggling DLSS on and off and TAA on and off as well, just so you can get a feel for the performance on the two different cards. LSS off drops to 30 hertz or 30 fps. So CP frame time 14.8 milliseconds, GPU frame time 25. Okay. Cairo Tower. Head back to the pyramids in a minute. <laughs> Nothing funky's going on with that river. It's bulging. FPS Honestly it's running now at 60 This feels fine You can make out the detail on the Sphinx Very impressive. A 
to say, this is really good. See all the fonts drops to when we turn DLSS off. So no DLSS on, it's just standard anti-aliasing TAA. 66 hertz. This is great. Here's the funky river. So around Cairo Tire. Sunset. Impressive. Let's go up there to the hills. See the uh, DLSS sort of artifacting around the wing strut there. FPS. Uh oh. Beached it. Yeah, boy. Just 70 hertz again. Here's up for water landing. So that takes us up for water to 90 hertz of DLSS on. Here's up for water landing. Or high 80s at least. the mountain here. Turn DLSS off just to see what sort of frame rate we get up here. Drops a bit. Too much. It's like no anti
Okay, let's see. From about 80 to about 70, but still looks good. Central Park. Tells the Empire State Building. So there we go, there's our baseline with DLSS off. Got a 22 flying over New York. Let's loop back around the Empire State Building. Put DLSS on. Let's see what we get. State building and then turn the LSS back on. So 45 hertz are on now, 45 FPS. Still about 50. How to smooth the image a bit.
the Statue of Liberty. So around, get a good look. Buoys. Yeah, it's a good flyby. So I thought I'd take a look at the stats from Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, unlike FPS VR, I was unable to collect all the data and uh, bring up a nice chart, but um, I've been able to capture the information from the screen. So this is just a rough guide. So what I've plotted here is the 30, 90 times at the three different locations, the FPS or the uh, refresh rate uh, displayed on the top line, uh, the frame time of the GPU and the calculated FPS using that frame time. So you can see here we max out at 44 and that's because uh, motion reprojection was turned on. Uh, but if you look at the actual frame time, this is the uh, theoretical maximum FPS that we could get from uh, 3090. Now if you look at the stats for the 4090, the same three locations, We've got the delivered FPS here, or the delivered refresh rate, and the frame time of the GPU again. But you'll notice if you calculate the FPS, it's quite a bit higher than uh, what we were getting in the game. And that's because if you look at the CPU time at various parts of the, uh, the footage, you'll see it's higher than the uh, GPU time. So we are, in fact, CPU bottlenecked in this game. And I think this is something that was... Um, mentioned in the uh, NVIDIA launch for DLSS3 uh, and the fact that they're using AI frame rendering to get around CPU bottlenecks. Uh, so we're seeing that actually with the 4090 because the uh, actual calculated FPS is 83 frames per second if we're using that frame time, which if you compare to the 3090 is about a 50% performance increase. And for the other two locations, we're looking at 70% and 38%. So this is in line with the other benchmarks that I've been doing. We've seen average games between about 45 and 100%. So with Microsoft Flight Simulator on the 4090, you can expect a performance improvement of between 40 and 70%. Now, based on the calculated FPS, we are very close to the uh, 90 Hertz for these two. So potentially in future, if I was to get a more powerful CPU, we might be able to get a, uh, a higher frame rate. Uh, but for the minute, we're CPU bottlenecked, um, as you can see here. But these are way over the uh, 45 frames per second that you require for motion reprojection. And actually, with uh, motion reprojection off, which it was for this second run, I found the, uh, the flying over the New York section, even at 50 hertz, was quite playable. So overall, some good improvements there, but there is some CPU bottlenecking. Okay, that's it for the RTX 4090 benchmark video in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Don't forget if you found this video useful, leave a thumbs up. Any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.